Hello, this is Geo Techland, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Pine Phone with Manjaro Fosh installed. It's been a while since I last used Manjaro Fosh on the Pine Phone, so I wanted to take a look at what's new and what has improved. So let's take a look. If you're enjoying my video, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, follow me on Odyssey. You could also support me on LibraPay. Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below. If you've been enjoying my latest avatars for my channel and my other two channels here, be sure to check out Bald Polnareff. He's the one that designed these. I'll leave links to his accounts in the description below. Alright, there's a few new things here. There's a docked and undocked. There's also the ability to switch the rotation, whether you want it to rotate automatically. But the very first app I'm going to check out here is Firefox. That now has some built-in modifications to make it a little bit more mobile friendly. One of the biggest concerns though is that a lot of the apps take quite some time to start. Looks like there hasn't really been that much progress in terms of getting those apps to start up a lot faster. Once I'm actually in Firefox, I would consider it usable. It'll stutter here and there, but otherwise should be able to have a decent browsing experience. Now, in terms of browsing videos, doesn't look like that's a good experience quite yet. So it seems like the phone struggles to play a video. This video is loading in 720p and even then it's struggling. Usually what ends up happening is that after a while, then it starts to get better in terms of playback but it doesn't look like it could do 1080p video uh, all that well. And then again, it even struggles at first to do 720p a lot of the time, so not much progress there. Next up, I'm going to take a look at one of the new apps that is pre-installed, and that is Anbox. However, I haven't actually been able to get this to run. When I open the app, it stays stuck in starting, and I've even let it run in the background for a few minutes, but it doesn't seem to actually work. Although it is kind of nice that it is included by default and once it starts working then i think this would be very useful to have pre-installed here next let's check out the gnome software center it seems that the apps that are here or pre-installed seem to work okay i'm not 100 percent sure if all these apps are curated but i did install super tux and when i first installed it i actually didn't think that it actually worked. It was only until I restarted and loaded up the app again that I just suddenly find it installed. So the game itself seems to run fine, but when I actually try to move around and touch the screen, it doesn't seem like there's support for touching on the device. I was not able to move the character here at all, but it is nice to know that you can run some games here. Next up, I'm going to check out Lollipop. Lollipop is a music player created in GTK, so it is very mobile friendly. It's got a very adaptive UI here. And this is one of the few apps that actually looks very good on Bosch here. Another cool GTK built app is this podcast app, which looks nice and seems to work okay. I was able to load my podcast version of the channel. One cool thing is that if you lock the screen, you could actually control the volume, you know, pause and play. And this just goes to show you that the foundation for these GNOME maps is there. You could see it in the GNOME desktop with, you know, being able to control like when you're watching videos online or on a web browser. And it seems that that has been ported over and it works really good here. Then there's this new to-do list here, which again, the UI looks good. It has a very simple, clean interface and gets the job done. We also have what it seems to be like the Pamac software center here. And again, it does seem that it is somewhat curated because there's only a very tiny amount of apps that you could actually install. So I'm very curious what the Manjaro team is going to do with this and how it's going to improve this and maybe compete with the GNOME software center on mobile here. Next, we have this portfolio app, which is a file manager app. The UI is designed a lot better for mobile. So that's pretty cool. In the app store, I was able to find one of my favorite apps, this Foliate app, which I actually reviewed on the channel here, at least the desktop version. And even on the desktop version, I thought to myself, this is going to look amazing on mobile. And I'm happy to know that 
this GTK built app looks good and works perfectly fine. And what's cool about this app particularly is that you can easily install an ebook from one of the sort of standard libraries here that I guess they have a lot of free books. And I was able to install a book. There are issues with it loading sometimes, but I don't, I think that's more of a phone issue too, that sometimes certain websites or just the web in general will sometimes struggle to load at times. But once this loads, I was able to install a, an ebook and it looks good. I like that I can easily set it to night mode and gives you a lot of options for customization. So this is one of those apps that was built using GTK designed to be very adaptive and I'm excited and happy that it looks good on Foss here. Next we have Siglo, which is an app designed to work with what I'm thinking is the, the Pine Time watch. That would be something I may test in the future. But otherwise it's nice to see that there's already an app and that the Pine Phone is somewhat ready for pairing with a watch. Then they have Confi, which is a conference schedules viewer. I'm not sure what this app is intended to do exactly, but I included it here just because it has a nice UI. It's nice to see that there's a simple sound recorder app. It works well and looks good on mobile here. Then we have the standard GTK editor, which works fine. It even gives you a close without saving prompt there. Then there's Fractal that is a matrix chat client. This was one of the few apps I've tried before and you could tell it's very much designed to be GTK friendly and so therefore it looks good on mobile. Then we have the GNOME Maps app, which looks good, although it's not quite UI friendly or adaptive here. I tried just doing a simple directions between two cities here. Then it seems like I couldn't actually click some of the options for the directions unless I rotated the device. So it looks like it still needs some fine tuning there. And then another new app is this Tweaks app, which looks like it's made by the Postmarket OS team because it's called Postmarket OS Tweaks, which has some really interesting options here. You can change the battery or automatic suspend options. Then you can set or change your appearance options. That's really nice that they've already have a nice looking tweaks app here that works out of the box. And then lastly, I wanted to take a look at the Megapixels camera app just to get an idea of how good or how not so good the PinePhone camera is. Definitely not going to get a very nice picture, but that's expected. I think it actually looks better through my OnePlus phone here since I'm recording this on a OnePlus, but at least the app itself works and is able to take pictures. So overall, Manjaro Fosh on the Pine phone still needs a lot of work in terms of performance. There's still an issue with apps taking too long to open. It doesn't need to be on the level of iOS or Android per se, but it should be relatively fast and at least close to how fast apps open on those other platforms. There still seems to be a lot of issues when you have even just two or more apps open. And I think there's still some room for improvement when you're just browsing the web and scrolling down in terms of performance. I also think that in terms of hardware, the Pine phone is still meant only for development. This is definitely not something I would recommend to mainstream users. Although basic things like calling and texting work. I don't know if I would even consider the phone with Bosch usable quite yet, unless you're adamant about using something that's open and privacy respecting, but there's still a lot to like here. We're still seeing the foundation laid down by the GNOME team with their work on adapting many different apps to work well on Fosh, which is a derivative of GNOME. You saw with the podcast app and even the music app, Lollipop, they look very good on the Pine phone and you could see the potential of using this as your daily driver. So when it comes to apps and app adaptability, I feel like that's in really good shape but of course, we're still gonna need the performance to consider this phone usable. But I don't even think it'll happen with this version or this iteration of the Pine phone. I still think we're gonna need to see a sort of Pine phone 2.0 with better CPU, maybe four gigabytes of RAM at least. And of course, there's still the issue with battery usage. Bosch is still a big drain on battery. So that's gonna need further optimizations as well. But let me know your thoughts. 
Do you like what you see so far with the Pine Phone and Manjaro Fosh? What else needs work or improvement in your opinion? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you all next time.